Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton from the District of Columbia uh, talking today at the House Oversight Committee. Now, again, you'd think this is a bipartisan issue. We can all be ticked off about this. Whether you're a Second Amendment supporter, whether you hate the idea of firearms. In fact, if you hate the idea of firearms, you should really be ticked off about Fast and Furious. But mm, that's not what we heard from the delegate today. Take a listen. You know, I, I just want to say um, it, uh, to, 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 to sit in a hearing and hear people beat up on the ATF is very, very interesting to me. You sit in a Congress where the gun lobby controls the Congress of the United States. On the Republican side of the aisle, they totally control it. On my side of the aisle, they virtually control it. And the Second Amendment is cited as, as you try to do your job to keep guns from essentially bringing down the government of an ally. Now, when it comes to Mexico, let me ask you, what kind of gun control laws does Mexico have? Any of you know about their gun control laws? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, I do. Yes, sir, would you speak up? Um, <clears throat> civilians could buy um, nothing greater than a 38 caliber. Anything after that is for the exclusive use of uh, the military and the police. So here is Mexico who does his job on its side of the border, it says you uh, essentially... It Whoa! Hang on! Time out. I'll, I'll even let you bash the NRA, Eleanor Holmes Norton, but whoa, whoa, whoa. Mexico does its job south of the border? I mean, yes, this is Eleanor Holmes Norton we're talking about. Of course, she's fine with Mexico's gun control laws. Uh, Delegate Norton... If you're listening tonight, I doubt you are, but maybe Mayor Bloomberg can give you a copy of tonight's program. Why don't you go down to Mexico for a fact-finding mission of your own, and why don't you simply ask random people on the street how well Mexico's gun control laws are working to keep them safe? Because here's the thing, <laughs> Representative Norton. Uh, the cartels have enough money that if they really want their guns, they can go to the corrupt Mexican police forces. They can go to the corrupt Mexican military. They can place their orders right there. Eliminate the middleman. You know who can't do that, Delegate Norton? People like me in Mexico. People like, well, uh, you'd probably get a pass because you're an elected official. Ordinary people in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, by law, they're legally allowed to own up to a 38 caliber revolver. If they can get approved by their government, if they can make the trip to Mexico City, where there is one gun store in Mexico City, then they can... They can exercise their right to keep and bear arms. If they can't, they're out of luck. And for most of the good people in Mexico, they're out of luck. You know, you talk about the Mexican drug, uh, gun control laws in Mexico doing its part. Why don't you ask the uh, police chief in the state of Guerrero how well Mexico's gun laws are doing? Because his brother was just killed by cartel members a few months ago. And he says he wants to go to Mexico City and petition Mexico's Congress to change their gun laws, not to make them more restrictive, if that were possible, but to make it possible for people, good people, to actually own a firearm to protect themselves. There's a guy who just lost his brother to cartel violence. Why don't you go talk to him? Oh, yes. Let's, let's all proclaim the greatness of Mexico's gun control laws. All right, more from uh, Delegate Norton here. Who does his job on its side of the border. It says, you, uh, essentially, 
it makes it very difficult for anyone except someone in law enforcement or the military to get a gun. So they come to the United States where trafficking is, is, is wide open. And let me ask you this. We are concentrating on Mexico now. Let me ask you about trafficking to Chicago. Let me ask you about traveling to the District of Columbia, to Baltimore. Let me ask you about trafficking to L.A. Do these same traffickers operate as effectively in our country as we have now seen them operate taking guns to Mexico? Well, I believe, I believe that the, the organizations are a little bit different. That's why I said earlier about the, we've never encountered an organization like this in Mex for Mexico. The, the trafficking in the U.S., my experience anyway, is a little bit different. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, association related, but uh, obviously trafficking domestically is a, a major issue for us, and I spent the majority of my career working those kind of cases. If um, uh, a person, let's say, buys uh, 200 guns, and here you made mistakes, if I had a dollar for every mistake this Congress has made when it came to guns, I'd be a very rich woman. Oh, you my made a God. Mistake. It was a fatal oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. That is my unofficial, non-journalistic reaction. Seriously. You made mistakes. But look, everybody makes mistakes. I mean, come on. I had a dollar for every mistake this Congress has made when it came to guns. Uh, well, let's see. Congress hasn't passed uh, major gun control legislation since 93. So you'd have a buck, <laughs> Delegate Norton. <laughs> one sh In fact, here, you know what? Hang on one second here. Uh, oh, look at that. Here you go. One shiny dollar. I'm going to mail it to your office, Delegate Norton. There you go. There is the one dollar that you get. For the uh, mistakes that Congress has made on uh, guns since 93. Uh, but can we go back to the mistakes that were made when it comes to Fast and Furious for a second? I mean, really, I know you'd, you'd like to demagogue about the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act and allowing the Clinton gun ban to sunset. But can we actually talk about this investigation for a minute or two? Can we? Can we hear her? Is a mistake. It? it was a fatal, fatal mistake. It was a mistake for which you are being held accountable. Let's say you hadn't made a mistake, that someone without a record bought guns. That's me. You found me with 200 guns. What could you do to me? Uh, nothing at all, ma'am. Uh, did you feel disarmed in your fight against this wholesale movement of guns from our country to Mexico, or did you feel you were equipped to, in fact, uh, by law enforcement to do what was necessary? Yeah, I, I think my experience, ATF agents are very resilient. You have to be to make the case, um, and that's what our people do, and they, they do that every day, and they're out there doing that today. And they may design tactics to try to make them, to, to make themselves more effective on the ground. I think that's what we should always be doing, yes. Um, would, could I ask each of you, uh, would you feel better able to stop this traffic if the Congress passed a law um, that made it and, and, and added to our criminal code a, a section that prohibited the transfer of a gun when an individual knows the gun will be transferred to a person who is prohibited from carrying a gun or intends to actually use the gun illegally. Uh, we currently do have a, a statute that, that does handle that. That's the whole line hey! of federal form violation. Whoa, so hang on. Hang on here. Why, we've just been told by uh, Representative Cummings, uh, Re uh, Representative Maloney from New York, and Delegate Norton that, that our, our laws are toothless. Our laws are like Hume Cronin and Cocoon. They don't, they don't have any teeth in them. And people can go in and they can, they can, they can lie all they want, and they can walk out with 18,000 guns.
And there's not a darn thing anybody can do about it. And then he actually asked a guy who, by the way, I, I don't know if Mr. McMahon is a staunch defender of the Second Amendment. I don't know. But you know what he just said? We already have a statute that does that. All right, let, let's listen to what the other agents had to say. So, but lying on the federal form gets you to where? Ten years. Gets us to, if we can know, prove that someone knowingly filled out that form incorrectly or lied. Can you seize guns? We've been talking about seizures here. In order to seize guns, giving me a what seizure. does the ATF have to show? That a violation of laws is committed with that firearm. Well, I'm back the, to the general lady's time has expired. But if anyone else wants to answer the question on what's no, yeah, I'm back to what, to what, what what's the law that's been violated. If anyone else wants to answer, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have to pr uh, prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that firearm was in some way used in violation of a of, uh, furtherance of violation of a crime or in violation of a crime. We can't just go out and randomly seize firearms from individuals. Firearms are in themselves not contraband. If we stop someone on the street with Five AKs, ten AKs, twenty AKs, or a hundred AKs, or hundred, and they're not prohibited. Or a jillion. As frustrating as that may be, and, and believe me, it's extremely frustrating. But as frustrating as that may be, we may not have any legal ability to take those to seize those firearms. 